because if you've seen the last couple of days, or well, it was really last week, because that's last Friday, we gotten some more quarterbacks making some big money. Um, two quarterbacks that were on defense when it came to uh, whether or not they're worth the kind of money, whether or not it, teams are, are are ready to invest them. Two quarterbacks by the name of Jordan Love, the Packers quarterback, and then, of course, uh, two attack of Loa, Dolphins quarterback, both cash in on massive deals. Jordan Love becomes the highest paid quarterback and in, in, in player in NFL history to the tune of four years, $220 million. Uh, two attack of, Loa, attack of Loa, uh four years, two twelve and a half. and um, Both guys have different risks for different reasons. In Jordan Love's case, it's more so a sample size thing. Um, Jordan Love's first year as a starter last season, he started the year pretty slow, turn it on late. Packers turn on late, make the playoffs, win a playoff game, and were in position to actually win a second playoff game against the uh, eventual uh, NFC champions, uh, San Francisco 49ers. So there was always obviously that, okay, do you, do you pay him now or do you take a little risk um, in, in that if you don't pay him now, he has a great year this season, for example, and then now his – his value now goes through the roof now. And I believe he was, and I believe he might have been either a free agent or close to a situation where he can opt out of his contract. I, I'm not sure exactly, but bottom line is Packers saw the urgency here to lock him up. They, they believe in this. This is this is their future. To their credit, they've done a good job in the last was it 30 years now of having quarterbacks. Um, you know the one guy had him for like 15 odd, odd years, and that's been their guy. Brett Favre from 92 to 2007. Aaron Rodgers from 2007, 2008 rather, to 2022. So they've had a good, they have a good track record of identifying their quarterback and locking them up and keeping them and making them their guy for a decade plus. Jordan Love, of course, like I said, last year, he tailed two different quarterbacks. Like he was a little bit, you know, a little bit rough on the edges early on in the year. And then by the end of the year, he was, he turned it on. So there's a, the risk here for them is more so the investment, but he's also young. So if you believe that what he did in the, in the last year is going to translate to his career going forward, then it's a great it's a great move now to lock him up. Nobody can before that, you know, sixty million dollars turns into seven million dollars next year because the annual because I mean, look the cap keeps going up and up and up, and which means that the the balloon of the annual salaries for quarterbacks are going to continue going up and up and up. And that was a situation where the Dolphins had to face also too with Tua Tagovailoa. In his case, it's a little different because it's more of an injury situation. It's more of a health situation. This guy does not stay healthy. Now, I say that, I say that, even though last year he played all 17 games. So kudos to him. He did his job. Because that was, that was a big thing coming in the year. Can Tua stay healthy? If Tua stays healthy, that system works when all parts are together. You know, parts being Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle and, and, and so on and so on and so on. It works. But you also saw parts where if Tyree Kill miss time, the offense sort of sputtered a little bit. So there's, there's, there's still that, okay, well, good. Tua stays healthy. Check. Off the box. Now, is Tua a guy that, say we lose receivers, is he still good enough to, to make other guys better? That's the little question. Because we saw last year where if Tyreek Hill missed time or Jalen Wall missed time, um, Tua was not as effective as a quarterback. And, and granted, I understand that you don't have, you have your best players, you know, you, you things can be a little bit Dice for quarterbacks, but there are quarterbacks that win in spite of that. One of the reasons why we, we we revere Patrick Mahomes, for example, is the fact that Pat Mahomes has now won back to back Super Bowls, even though he lost Tyree Kill two years prior or a year prior to win those back to Super Bowls. You know, so he, he's found ways to win with other guys. It hasn't been pretty, but he's gotten the job done. So in 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 retrospect. Can you have, have the Dolphins identify Tua as a guy that they, that can still elevate when times are rough? And that's what separates the the good from the absolute great and elite. We talk about all the time on on, this, on you know through all these media shows and this podcast about eliteness. Who's an elite? You know, there are really only a few elite guys in this league. Like I mean, I, I, I definitely count on one hand. You know, top ten doesn't, doesn't mean you're an elite quarterback. It means you're you're above average, but to be special like a Patrick Mahomes, special like Josh Allen, special like, you know, Joe Burrow. You know, there's going to be an extra something. And we're, we're going to see that, especially with uh, this year with uh, Josh Allen when he loses Stephon Diggs. Because I believe that situation is going to be, um, 
even though Stephon Diggs is a phenomenal talent, top ten receiver in the league, I firmly believe that that situation is going is to be addition by subtraction. Because Stephon Diggs, for example, to me was an distra- a distraction, uh, in terms of him wanting the ball all the time, and Josh Allen having to having to feed him the ball all the time, and, it, and, and in some ways disrupted their offense. That being said, can Tua be that guy where he can elevate? Even without a target kill for a game or two, or Jalen Waddle game or two, well, the, the payment such, you know. And I think they're doing the same thing. Also, I don't, look, I don't, I don't know the structure of these deals because I'm, I'm wondering if it's structured the same way they, they the Giants structured Daniel Jones, where people saying, "Oh, Daniel Jones got paid too much money," and I agree with you on that. But at the same time, they made a calculation that if he's going to ascend going forward, get him, get him at a, at a lower number, you know. Whereas, let's say Daniel Jones last year and ended up having a great year last year. Say they franchise Daniel Jones, you know, the first year, last year, and then he has a great year. Now his $40 million turns to $50 million, even $60 million, maybe. So they identified, but no, of course, that, that was around the choice because he is not that good, <laughs> you know, obviously. Um, but the, why I defended the deal was the fact that the deal was really only a two year deal, not really a four year deal. They can opt out of this, they can, they can get out of this deal after his year two. So after this season, if Daniel Jones is not good, the Giants identify that they're not, he's not their future, they can, they can get out of that contract without any issue. I'm curious if the I, I I doubt it that is similar to that, you know. And I think the amount of years too also on these deal for for Love and Tua, based on their age, they can cash in again in three or four years. So these these short term deals are cool because you stay healthy and you stay playing well, you can go to the back one more time. Also, this deals also gives is actually good news for one of the quarterback. One high, one high profile quarterback, Dak Prescott. Let me tell you why. This is the last year on the contract with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, he clearly, obviously, wants money. He wants to get paid again. Pay like a, like a top guy. Um, Dallas is in the pickle now because Dallas would like to lock him up for the future, but the prime the problem is the price tag, and then is he worth it? And then what works against Dak on that angle that angle is that. He's also 31 years old. Now, that's not really old, but it's not as young as these. It's, it's a six-year gap between two of Tiger Law and Joe Love, both guys in the mid-20s. However, Dak still has all the leverage. So long as Dak stays healthy, so long as the Dallas Cowboys continue to be relevant and be a playoff team, like we understand the Cowboys, the problem is they they, they came in the playoffs. Made no mistake about it. Well, you love to hate the Cowboys. And I, I damn sure hate the Cowboys. I'm a Giants fan. Come on now. The fact of the matter is this, is that Dak Prescott, this team is really, really good with Dak Prescott quarterback. The problem is it's a ceiling. Basically, this team is a guaranteed playoff, te- playoff team with this guy under, under under center. Okay? But they can't get over the hump. The second round playoffs is their ceiling. So, do the Cowboys make a calculation that, you know what, this team is, is not good enough with him as quarterback. We need to get we need to take a chance. Maybe we need to help the guys behind. Maybe maybe you, you, you go to Cooper Rush. Maybe you go to a Trey Lance. That's still a risk, though, because, you know, and yeah, granted, you have the ancillary parts around right now, C. Lamb and all these other guys, all these great, talented guys around them. But are they going to be able to play on level of that Prescott? And if they don't lock up that Prescott, that Prescott, here's the reality of the situation. That Prescott next year, assuming he does, he, assuming, assuming he maintains the same level of play he did last season, into this season, and the Cowboys is a playoff team still at the very least. He will make his money. The question could be whether it will be, whether it will be in Dallas or elsewhere, because now the market will be opened up for Dak Prescott anywhere. Now I'm sure da- Dak wants to stay in Dallas. He is still wants to stay in Dallas, obviously. But at the same time, you ain't paying the guy. You're gonna find some money elsewhere. And some of the things that Jerry Jones been saying in, in the press as of late. You know, I won't say suspect, but you you get the vibe that there isn't full confidence. You know, there isn't full confidence in um in Dak. So we shall see. We shall see. It's gonna be an interesting situation going forward uh, with Dak. Um, because it, the other issue too that Dallas is facing is that the reports were last week with that they are currently negotiating with CD Lamb to get him his new deal, receiver CD Lamb. So. Typically, when you have that happening, when the receivers can get the money first, it it's it, it spells 
weird optics because normally you want to lock up the quarterback first and then the pieces around him. But the fact that you're hearing reports of C. Lamb is being deals being worked on right now currently, or a, a deal, a possible deal before the season starts, before that Prescott seems to tell you, suggest that at least from the optics that the guy was unsure if that Prescott is the future. At least at the price tag that they that they, that he would would probably be uh, command on the market uh, for either this year or next year. So it's something that Jerry Jones and company are you know they got to figure that out. Um, I still think overall they'll come to agreement. I think Jerry Jones will find a way to make that work. It's not that they have the money to do it, but again, this is a salary cap league. It's a hard cap league. You can only pay so many guys. And if that Prescott is the guy, or they believe he's the guy to take him over the top, that means the ancillary pieces may have to suffer in the future. But we'll see. We'll see. He's still going to pay C. Lamb. Still got to pay Michael Parsons. You know, he's got to pay Diggs a corner at some point. These are things that make Dak, you know, that prop Dak up. And those pieces aren't there. How good is Dak? And that's the question. And that's the, that, and again, that's what separates the Mahomes from everyone else. That's what separates the Brady's and everyone, everyone else. Now, in Brady's case, Brady did take pay cuts and all that, but still, you that's what separates those guys of being special versus you know, a, you know, a top ten quarterback, but not someone that's like as good as Mahomes or Lamar Jackson or Josh uh, Joe Burrow. You know, those those guys or Josh Allen. 